What's up, YouTube? Capital G here giving you guys a post ban list market watch, letting you guys know what the heck is going on in the secondary market. I only make these videos once every blue moon or when something monumental happens in the Yu Gi Oh! TCG. And when you get one of the largest TCG ban lists ever, one of the biggest updates to the FNL list we have ever seen, the sheer amount of cards moving around, cards getting hits, cards coming off the list, so many of them, cards that are no longer on the list. I think that the sure volume volume of this list pretty much demands that we look at the secondary market because there's so much going on so many decks skated that um you know you thought were going to get hit so many unexpected hits so many unexpected cards coming back etc etc it all has value in the secondary market so let's start with gumblar dragon the card has dropped a little bit. You can expect this to go down even further. Keep in mind, we're only about 12 hours removed from the ban list being revealed. Thus, this card is still has, you know, it still has a lot of room to drop. There is absolutely no market for Gumblar Dragon right now. Probably going to be banned for the uh, rest of the Vrains era. And I really don't see there being any market on this card because I think that a lot of people, this card just left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. So yeah, Gumblar Dragon is a card that probably is just going to continue to drop. Sky Strikers as a whole a lot of their best cards are actually up sky strikers completely skated on this ban list i thought it was ridiculous that people wanted kagari to get hit might as well just kill the ban i mean kill the entire deck at that point unlike the ocg we do not have you know three copies a pot of avarice to kind of save this deck and really um the sky striker players are people who were on the fence they now feel pretty good about this deck going into ycs chicago people look at it as a really good investment you know you can pick up all the cards, not have them get hit at least for a couple of months. So you have time to play at Atlanta. You have time to play at Chicago. You have time to play at a couple of regionals and get your fun in with your Sky Striker deck. And generally when Sky Strikers don't get hit as they have not really gotten, uh, you know, too hard, or they haven't gotten too harshly hit other than Hornet drones in the TCG, you start to see their cards or you start to see their cards um, essentially just kind of go up after every ban list. A lot of the players are like, oh my goodness, we're safe. So you see kind of the ultimate rares. You see where anchor you're gonna see mobilize engage you see these cards go up in price because the confidence has been restored that you know it's gonna continue to be a tier one deck ultra guys multi faker it's still pretty much up. It's going up just a couple of bucks. This is also expected. A lot of the Ultra Geist cards are actually like ultra rare. Some of them, well, some of them have been reprinted in lower rarity, so it's not that relevant. But uh, Multi Faker is the only card that's like only an ultra rare. Comes out of Flames of Destruction, so it's kind of hard to find that in the wild. Keep in mind, Ultra Geist did recently win uh, YCS Sydney, and a lot of people consider it to be maybe the front runner going into the next format because deck seems to have pretty good matchups across the board. And and it did not receive any hits at all. That was a lot of people predicted that there wouldn't be any hits. And this was actually one of the main cards a lot of people thought could actually get hit. Maybe go to two. Maybe end up going to one, etc., etc. Alter Guy Skate. So one of their best cards goes up in price. Number 75. We haven't really seen much movement with our next couple of cards but these are cards i think people should keep their eyes on and i would not necessarily pick up right now as um as, as a salomon great player myself i do run number 75 in my extra deck but let's be real almost all of the playability of this card was tied directly to rungo that's why it's the number one card when it says people also purchase if you're gonna buy 75 why not buy a rungo but salomon greats can actually summon this card i mean burning abyss technically can too but there's really no reason to ever summon this over something like dante for the most part so i think that this card will um just unfortunately or no not unfortunately inevitably go down because there is no more rungo there is no more this card being used by the masses it's pretty much only a salaman great kind of card to use and i think that about half the players don't really run it. it's very similar to something like fusion of fire about half the salaman great players will run it the other half won't run it and i think that because of that the market for this card is just it's going to be depleted it's only going to be a fraction of what it was uh before and even though this, this card is a little difficult to find because you're not going to find any relentless revenge out there in the wild i think that this card is just inevitably going to go down there's no way it's going to hold this 30 dollar price tag i think that it'll be 20 dollars probably before we even get to chicago maybe even less we've got the danger cards now these i don't exactly know what is going to go on with them i think that 
the danger cards obviously have been just going up you look at danger snack this damn thing is almost fifty dollars danger jackalope was fifteen dollars not that long ago now it's twenty dollars danger nessie has pretty much just been holding its value it'll be interesting to see because you know thunder dragons were like one of the main reasons that these cards had just shot up in value obviously you can use the level threes in the salaman great deck you can also use them in burning abyss but you know burning abyss players they did lose fairy tale snow people are talking about burning abyss probably going to take a step back until dark neo storm and cherubini so maybe we'll see burning abyss not do so hot this format and you know maybe these cards could only be potentially in salaman greats and again only about half the players maybe even less are going to run these cards so i don't know what the value or the market's going to be it'll it'll kind of be determined a lot by thunder dragons do thunder dragon players just do they drop the, the danger engine completely because a lot of this had to do with going into curious and not being able to drop fairy tale snow now that there's no more fairy tale snow in the deck it's like is it even worth it should we even continue this should we just go back to soul to Sol solar battery man should we run the no the new lone wolf card from savage strike which i know its name is different but i think that um the danger cards will be there'll be something to keep their eyes on i would not pick these cards up right now because i honestly feel like they can only go down in value chicago will kind of be what tells us what you know the future of the danger archetype etc etc kaiju interrupted slumber or interrupted kaiju slumber this is a card that's been going up a lot of people are saying that you know this can be an answer to sky strikers kaijus have always been pretty good against sky strikers because it gets rid of their um you know sky striker monster on field plus it forces them to have a monster in the main monster zone it can't activate their spells and traps this does the same thing however it gives you a beater at the expense of letting their ray potentially trigger they still can't use any of their spell cards because they have a monster in the main monster zone whether that be ray or whether that be the kaiju monster itself so kaiju uh slumber is up actually right now also it's good discard fodder because you can discard it for something like twin twister search the kaiju card Bright, brilliant fusion we knew that this card was probably going to go down i don't think the ultimates are going to drop because people out there playing gem knights and people still playing the brilliant engine are probably going to look towards the ultimate rare the the copy i think is going to continue to drop is the secret because it's not the max rarity plus if you had a play set of three brilliant fusions you already have two extras that you can't really do anything with thus the market might be potentially flooded and um i mean the people who weren't playing brilliant fusion and maybe you're looking to pick one up they're only looking to buy one of those secret rares so now you still got an extra even if you sell one i think that the market is just going to be flooded on the secret rares same things with the supers i think that these cards are going to come down is it still worth it to play brilliant fusion at the expense of one garnet one brilliant fusion yes it's still searchable by the predator plant engine but then you're running so many cards just to resolve this one card it feels like the epitome of brick city cyberstein this one's crazy if you started playing Yu-Gi-Oh during zexel or during 5ds even during arc v you probably have never seen this card summoned in a sanctioned duel i can't oh my god I, I have to go back to like my early 20s to remember the, the last time that i saw brilliant fusion act or excuse me just to, to remember the last time i saw saw cyberstein summoned or the last time i actually summoned this card a lot of people don't even realize there are only two printings of cyberstein it hasn't been relevant because the card has been banned since 2006 if you guys want to know about cyberstein's story go watch my video uh no moss has like 160,000 views and it's a great story um yeah cyberstein's a 20 dollar card and obviously you're not looking to buy <laughs> the almost three thousand dollar copy which is the uh the shonen jump <laughs> ultra rare from like 2005 back in the day but uh yeah this is a card that i think that i mean it could be kind of cool summoning some of those big fusion monsters from your extra deck that'd be interesting but you know i think that it'll see probably not a lot of meta play i think that cyber i mean i think actually that thunder dragons can play it to be honest i, I think that they're one of the few decks that can actually sum or summon that card and use it for a lord darkness if it's dead infernity barrier the shining darkness copies that are secret rare are actually going up now infernity did get a boost because infernity barriers at three and i have played infernity on um uh during the Vrains era but that was with firewall dragon and three armageddon knights and stuff so <laughs> i don't know if that'll still work plus there's no soul charge um dark greffers at one now i just feel like it's too much i feel like konami has to give um archfiend back to three if they want this deck to you know be somewhat playable again i don't really know if you can like get the archfiend quick enough now that armageddon knights and that um greffer are both at one i just don't know how you're going to be able to get it into the graveyard i guess you still have foolish burial but man that is tough sledding i think konami also gave infernity barrier back to three because they realized hey if we're going to print a billion infernity barriers we might as well give the og version back to the players this is the saddest thing about this ban list to me 
when it comes to the secondary market, guys. Rest in pepperonis for the players who wanted to play Necros right now. Necros of Brionic sitting at $60. The card tripled in price as soon as people realized that it was unlimited. It's like, oh, you guys get three times as many Brionics? Three times the price, baby. <laughs> oh, man. At least it's better than when this card came out in 2015. You guys remember it was 180 to sometimes like $190, $200 range. Even when it kind of dropped in price and went to two, it was still plus $120, a really expensive card card um thank goodness we're getting the reprints in dual power so if you want to play necros which spoiler alert i actually think can be a potential meta deck i think that you just have to wait until april unfortunately so and by then you know maybe by april maybe konami will give us another unicorn which uh you know that that could definitely help as well um we want to talk about el shadow construct very similar to necros got a key piece of support back necros got a couple cards and uh shadow's got one finally got constructs i really wouldn't pick up um you know constructs right now i feel like it's inevitably going to go to three before i don't know i think it'll go to two before the w before the uh the, the the nawcq so i think just maybe wait it out um the mega 10 versions aren't really like their prices are not even really going up however the um the version from Duos Alliance is actually up because people, if, if there are only two printings of a card, people are always going to lean towards the original um, the original core booster set. So I feel like that's probably going to stay. But I don't really think that this card will see any significant play, especially with Fairy Tail Snow being banned. It's just kind of another hit to shot all, even though they got their card back. Insector Hornet is up just a little, little bit. Um, Insectors are good. I think they still can have some explosive turns and they can still OTK. The problem with Insectors is just because of the way that they work especially with three hornets they have to go second and that's unfortunate because if you have to go second in Yu-Gi-Oh to kind of make advantage because the only other way they can make advantage is with ladybug and hoping they open up but that doesn't actually like get rid of the opponent's resources if you have to go second in Yu-Gi-Oh I feel like they might have to play forbidden lance for things like widow anchor and they probably have to play hand traps I mean can it work maybe I mean they, they still have the ability to dragonfly hornet just blow up your opponent's entire field so like don't discredit I would love nothing more as somebody who went seven and two once at a regionals with insectors i would love nothing more for insectors to be meta again you know what this deck needs <laughs> i'm gonna sound so crazy here give it an infinity barrier <laughs> give everything an infinity barrier anyways you guys let me know what you're thinking let me know what you think of the secondary market right now Leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, let me know what you're going to play for the next format. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already. And turn on that notification bell for daily videos.